Barry Westhead here with a few pointers on how to photograph your artwork. Tonight we'll be working in a studio setup, but I'll mention alternates that you can use if you don't have a fully lit uh, photographic studio. There are all options you can use in terms of um, other types of lighting. You can use sunlight, shade, or an overcast day and photograph outdoors and get some of the same effects we'll be seeing here tonight. So let's first take a look at how the artwork is mounted in the setup and how it's illuminated. What we've got down at this end of the studio is our mounting board shelf with a ruler on it. Uh, for as long as we get some of the inches in the shot, we can always have a, a record of the uh, size of the artwork. And we've got our Grey Tag Macbeth uh, color chart for reference. We'll only take one shot with that just uh, to get our white balance and check our color accuracy after the shoot. On this side, for glossy works with texture, we use a side light arrangement. And this light, which is a... These lights are all strobes that we're using, high power strobes. Uh, they each, each has a modeling light which allows it to be turned on and give an indication of what the strobe light will look like. So our angle here from the wall to the light for textured work is 25 degrees. Normally this light would come down from the ceiling, but what we do for convenience is we put the light to the side, we turn the, the, the artwork so the top is toward the light so it's still being lit from above. Although some uh, works of art have more texture in the vertical plane and so we leave them uh, hanging vertically on the on the uh, mounting board and let the shadows play out across the, uh, uh, the work. This light is a softbox but because we want shadows to show we've taken the, the uh, diffuser off. The diffuser is an option if you want a softer shadow on your on your textures. You have the diffuser that you can just velcro on here. But the important the important part here is to have a large light box and have it on a 25 degree angle. The large uh, light source from the reflective backing allows us to work with a very large um, uh, work. And if it's a, a very large work, uh, say uh, 60 or 70 inches high we can actually take a shot of the top part and take a shot of the bottom part with the, with the light down low and blend them. To get a gauge on how much the light is falling off from left to right, there'll be a little bit more light here because it's closer to the light, a little less here. We shoot a gray card like this and we actually map the strength of the light across the field and we can use that as a correction factor uh, later when we're processing the photograph. Now, as a, as a reference, we're going to use this uh, mat, and I'll show you at the end of the uh, of these pointers uh, what it uh, looks like photographed. Okay, so now we've got the mat on the board. Uh, we'll take a shot of it. Now we have our camera down here on our tripod. Some of the important factors to consider when you're shooting are A, you probably will need a tripod unless you're in very bright sunlight and you'll want to very carefully align the camera to the artwork. The way we do it in the studio is we have a laser gauge that shoots out a beam and underneath, underneath our uh, mat here is there's an X representing the center of the artwork. This hangs on here, shoots a beam down the room uh, hits a target on the other end. and there's a line right down the floor here that we keep our camera on so we're always at exact an exact right angle to the painting. That way we don't get the painting looking like a trapezoid instead of a square. You can accomplish the same effect outdoors using the sun. You may not be able to put the artwork flat because you're going to need the, this angle from the sun to the artwork at 25 degrees in order to get any kinds of shadow. Um, uh, 25 degrees is what a gallery will normally use if they want to emphasize the texture of the work. If not, they'll, they'll mount the light 30 degrees out and sometimes even 35 degrees out as the angle on the painting. But you'll need 30 degrees, uh, 35 to 25 degrees on 
the sun angle, so you'll have to put the painting on something that you can slope up or down. So until you get the right shading on the texture, you can have someone hold it or, uh, or prop it there. Then you can stand up on something high like a ladder and shoot down as carefully aligned to the center of the work as you possibly can get. And that should give you uh, some simulation of what we've got happening here. For the next scenario, we're going to look at photographing artwork that doesn't have texture that we need to emphasize. And this can be anything like a watercolor or an acrylic or oil that where the, the paint hasn't been built up, uh, built up thick enough to uh, require capturing the texture. So for this section, we're going to be using these two lights. And because it's a little tight in here for me to get the video camera in, we're going to switch over to a hat cam. Okay, and now we're uh, on the HatCam audio and video feed. Now we're behind the scenes. You can see our studio lighting and some of the back of our computers. So what we're looking at now is we're going to move this out of the way. So that we have a direct line of, for these two uh, lamps. And these two lamps are focused on a couple of X's behind the scenes here that represent where they should be focused to give an even distribution of light across the whole width and even wider, uh, as wide as the, uh, these gray cards that we're using. On this light is a polarized filter. You know how light is waves? Well, this filter lets only the waves that are vertical go through. Same with this filter. And so the waves that are hitting here that are, that are vertical, they're blocked by the camera Polaroid filter, which I'll show you here. This filter, the Polaroid filter right here. This filter is horizontal. So what happens is we eliminate all reflections, all reflections from the painting. You can get something close to this by photographing your artwork outdoors in full shade or on a, an overcast day. So our lighting arrangement now looks like this. We've got these two lights aimed, cross aimed at uh, roughly 45 degrees to the painting. Gives us a perfectly even light across the entire surface of the backboard. We'll turn off the modeling lights and take a picture. All right, we've got our lights back on now, and I've put up a piece of tinfoil just to give you a, an indication of how these polarizing uh, filters work. You can see, I'm not sure how clearly you can see, but you can, I'm hoping you can see in the hat cam the glare that's on that tinfoil in the viewfinder of the camera. Now I'm just going to turn the polarizer so that it's cross-polarized, and you can see the glare disappears and we can actually photo photograph the texture of the tinfoil without all that glare. Okay, now we've got both images on the computer. Let's have a look. Here are our two images. The one we're looking at presently is the one we shot with the side lighting. It looks unevenly lit over in the bottom right hand corner here, but that's just because the mat itself is crumpled and casting a shadow. You wouldn't get that with a normal hard piece of artwork. I might also mention that these uh, massive clamps we use to attach the mat are not what we use to attach artwork. Normally we just rest the artwork on this the ruler shelf at the bottom and there are Velcro strips at the top of the mounting board. We attach a temporary adhesive Velcro to the back of the artwork and we, we press it against the Velcro strips at the top. So back to our images. We, what we're looking at here is the first image. Let's go over and look at the uh, second. So that's the image taken with the equivalent of diffuse light. We're lighting it from both sides and we're using a polarizing filter to remove any glare at all. Let's look at these two full size and see the difference in the details. 
we can actually compare them and take them full screen. And on the left here you see our side lit where it's clearly showing the texture. And on the right you're seeing the diffuse lit which shows quite a bit more detail which is probably the one we'd want to use unless we wanted to convey the fact that this was a mat with texture in which case we would choose this one. But this is a much a much better lighting scenario, the diffuse light, to capture details. The only time you'd want to use the side light, and it's probably only 20% of the art that's photographed is um, textured. So normally you're going to be doing the diffuse lighting. If you're not in a studio, it would be the overcast scenario that we've uh, shown you previously. So let's go to 200% and see how see if that shows up a little shows the differences a little better on the uh, video there's the two results and you can clearly see the difference so there we have uh, two methods of photographing artwork and two different results one showing texture and the other not and showing a little more detail you can always run the progress pointer at the bottom of the video back to review some of the text summaries we've interspersed throughout the video. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me via my website on the contact page. And that'll be a wrap for this session. Thanks for joining me.